Right, Gary. Um, I don't. I don't want to be fighting. Now, I like our arguments that we've had in the past that that I enjoy, but I don't want to be fighting um, and with real animosity and things like that. And you know, I would be sad if you passed away. Um, I don't expect reciprocation. It's like if you have, if you, if I'm a somebody that, that's out there with my binoculars and I'm watching the wild uh, elephants and there's one and uh, he's an interesting elephant but if I get around him he tries to stop me I'll just give that elephant more uh, room um, because I'm aggravating it not because I'm afraid I can't handle myself around an elephant but um, you're understanding the animal world. I think you'll get tr the example I'm trying to make. I mean, it could be two elephants. And, you know, I would love if there was a sense of uh, learning each other's space so that we could have discussions. Um, but probably not, because, you know, I'm stuck with my perspective, um, which leads me to, to my theories and my interpretations. Um, it is just my system. The only difference between my system and your system, really, one, your system and my defense of the establishment in science is, you know, it's not an absolute endorsement, but I think the process works over time, and you can't just ignore it if your theory involves bringing up, criticizing them, then I just am going, oh, well, but no. That's separate from my system, which is also, it's not endorsed scientifically, but I'm more careful to not violate what the scientists say the data is. I believe the scientists' data. The scientists' interpretations, no, they're not that great at the philosophy side of what, what it all means. They're better at the math in general, you know, the reliable part. And um, I do believe the data, though. So I just get on the side of, of my perspective and um, just like I always have, you know, I'm, I'm, that video was about, you know, how I think space works. And, you know, I feel like you could stick with convincing if you just realize it's not really between us. You're convincing all those subs or people that might see the video that you make. Um, and between us, we're really just describing our systems because we have a different perspective and we're, we're stuck with those. And you don't really change those so much. And if you successfully did, because people are able to, to galvanize the movements, you wouldn't be converting people like me into people with your perspective. It would have to be, this is just, again, my theory, not my personal theory, I didn't make it up, but um, it's a Nietzsche's theory, that uh, and you don't rat on the idea because of that in this case um, but uh, politically incorrect uh, ter uh, Gen X terminology there but anyway um, what I was trying to say is that I'm stuck with my perspective and it's evolving on its own and if you were to galvanize a movement, then it would be that people already have feelings. People will go, oh my God, this guy says exactly how I feel. It's like he's saying how I feel because they've already grown through whatever that psychological evolutionary process, multiple generational perhaps, or who, all the ways it might happen, um, where they're ready and you're vocalizing something. And so that galvanizes it because people were feeling that way. And, you know, maybe you could pick the fruit early and ripen it artificially or something. But basically, <clears throat> um, you know, I, I don't see that it's possible. But it, it, we could still be compatible, even though you, you may probably disagree with the way I look at it there. In that, just face the fact that I have my theory. What good is it to you? 
Well, it's a backdrop, and you think you're demolishing my theory with the machine gun, and that only looks good for your theory. I disagree. I don't want to demolish your theory, but maybe I inadvertently do with my laser beams that I imagine scanning the shit out of it. And it's up to people watching to decide for themselves how, how that works out. That's how I would think it would be okay, and we wouldn't have to take it so personally. But, you know, I know the, I am too blunt. I should have to be careful <clears throat> if I want to really take credit for, for being peaceful. I know people take offense when you start acting like, well, that idea is stupid. Obviously, everybody would go, yes. I don't really take offense at that. To me, what I hear is, oh, you think my idea is stupid. And that could just as easily be because you don't understand it. It could be, even if I go, maybe my idea is stupid, then I'll just think about my idea. Wait, is this idea stupid? And if you say details of why it's stupid, I'll go, wait, does that? And I'll shine that light on it. And guess what? Usually I don't end up thinking it's stupid. And, and I acknowledge it might be stupid and I'm just stuck. I'm just stubborn. But I don't think so because sometimes I do look at an idea and I, I realize it was stupid. Sometimes they're pretty... They were pretty important ideas to me. Like, I thought pi was some sort of weird, not really a number, because it had infinite digits, until Casino McCool on uh, YouTube explained to me directly that pi is just as much a number as anything else. The fact that we can't put it in a finite number of digits is a problem with our numeric system. And in reality, because pi is the ratio between the circle and the square... Um, it's arguably more real of a number than two, which is arbitrary. Two is to what, you know, and twice as many as two and four. You know, these numbers are interchangeable and scalable and translatable to each other in a way that pi isn't. Pi is itself. You can't multiply it by something and turn it into uh, E unless pi is in the thing you're multiplying it by. Like you can multiply it over by, by E over pi, of course, but you're got an extra you cheat it okay see I'm forgetting again I, this I want to be very specific because this is um, potentially difficult and probably can't continue um, and if I think I'm being funny probably that's usually often I've noticed where people take things the wrong way okay so hopefully because I'm gonna put this up no matter what so I'm not gonna hopefully I didn't you know set things off there to where I won't be able, I'm hoping to be able to watch the reply and we don't have to continue on necessarily because I don't think this is the kind of feedback you want, I guess, but I don't know exactly why that is. Because what I offer basically is that I try to memorize your idea. I'm just, yeah, I'm an idea collector. It means that, okay, I'm treating you like a specimen, but it means I, I yeah, I value your ideas just because they exist and when they if they hold together at all, even if there's gaps and logical flaws and I criticize them like that, um, I find them very interesting. And, and it's not hard to explain. It's just like I like science fiction. Uh, there's one science fiction author, Greg Egan, I read. He just makes up worlds with their own physics. <laughs> he tells his story in this world with weird physics and everything's, you know, weird for that reason. And he's, he's not trying... To say that, oh, this is how it really is. I'm sneaking in a book. No, he just likes to create alternate physics and then put that in his science fiction. And so if I like that, of course, why I wouldn't like other people's ideas that I think are fiction. But, you know, they're theories. You think mine is a fiction or whatever. Um, and I wouldn't really call, you know, the rope theory, which I think is somewhat ridiculous, um, I wouldn't call it fiction exactly. It's technically fiction. But um, I think it's more fair to say it's a theory that I don't think is apt, right? It's a theory that, that isn't apt. <coughs> and, um, okay, so f see if I can go through this and not take too long. It's late. I decided I'd make a video. Um because I worked late, but it wasn't because I was worked a lot today. I worked an ordinary amount of time, but I ended up taking these breaks. Just the COVID is, there's a little COVID stress here where sometimes it's been hard to concentrate during the afternoon. I need to do a chunk of that. But um, 
which is hard because I have to be around in case I get pinged or meetings or anything. So it's like a long work day, but I'm reading up on COVID stats or whatever. Okay. Now, in terms of the not fighting approach, which people are going to make fun of me for, oh, you think, no, I know you, I'll say something that will make you rage. And it's not funny. It's nervous laughter. I'd rather you, you didn't because to me, stuff's just pretty real right? I don't want to disvalue anything if I can help it. And my bluntness and my sense of humor and certain aspects that I'm never going to give up about not lying. I, I don't tell other people things to make them, uh, uh I don't change. I don't, sh I don't, alter the truth in order to say things to make people feel good but I do would prefer to make people feel good and often when I do make a joke um, you know I think it's like good heart and everybody's going to feel good and you don't and that's like everybody's problem with humor but especially I think you know more philosophy types especially can really uh, it can it can be like seem hurtful a joke that isn't at all normally an insult or whatever just subtle I don't know why it is that way but I admit that that's going on so in in me <laughs> and uh, you know I'm 52 I'm not sure how much that'll change but um, I don't think it's a good excuse to be upset but the point is I've been giving you space and here we are talking to each other and to me this is like I'm gunning up next to the elephant and that's okay and I don't want to have to stun the elephant with the tranquilizer to save myself from being stomped or anything. That's not my idea. My idea is that I'm going to go through the stuff I thought your video actually it started out with some stuff that is kind of what I've been talking about um, a little bit now but uh, but also I, I, I see I think you do understand kind of what I'm getting at. That doesn't mean you can see that I'm right, obviously. And sometimes, this is one thing I was going to say, too, as far as um, you think I give concessions and take them back. But what it really is is things like, like I concede that the tractor beam problem is intractable. Um, and also the repulsion problem, because in the quantum mechanics thing, you also, you know, magnetism goes both ways. And yet... If you don't have repulsion, then things are actually hitting together. But in a sense, these are pure energy and whatnot, and they don't. Uh, it doesn't seem like to me like that's particularly likely either. Like they're knocking into each other. Um, of course, it does to most people and stuff. But the point is that. When I can see at a point like the tractor beam problem is is a big problem, um, I'm not. I, I then use it in my system. The way it interacts with everything else leads still to a different interpretation, right? So I'm not. I'm not taking it back. Um, sometimes I might change my mind, but I think most of these cases we're talking more like that. Um, and with the water metaphor, um, I'm not trying to explain how why water works the way it is. I'm assuming everybody knows how water works. I'm using water as a source metaphor because part of my point, and I have videos that are 10 years old trying to make this point, is that it's not magic waves. I don't understand very much why uh, it seems like... So I watch Theoria... I, well, you know, not every video of them, though I did for a while, but David DeHilster, I don't know what's going on with him. He hasn't been coming up, but maybe I should click on his channel, but because I was watching a lot of his. I watched Bill Gate before you even started doing physics. You know, he was an ex-CIA thing and with him. He's interesting. And uh, Nick Harvey, the artist theory of time, and I used to watch the guy, oh, I forget, um, who thought I was a, a government agent um, but he had a scientific system and um, who else there's others and I search it as well um, and a lot of them yeah I have this this 
idea that waves is just a woo woo. But water waves, we've been watching water waves, even in my, an animal. If a, a dog is looking at the water and sees ripples on the water, knows that the, it means something's in the water. And at least I think they, the animals can know that. And certainly we have been seeing that for millions of years, the whole hominid ape experience. And even, you know, we know what waves are. They're not woo-woo. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't think it's particularly fair to say it's woo-woo. I think it's so fundamental that it makes sense that there's the particle idea, which is also ancient and fundamental and easy to understand because it's a stone, right? Little bits of stone, tiny bit of sand. But water waves also, and other wave phenomena that we've discovered since water waves, you know, other atmospheric phenomena, and you can see the ripples in the sand which I would say are, are kind of a, a wave. And um, you can argue for that, I think. And um, sound and, and light has does have wave properties. Um, so the water metaphor is like the source for where we understand, like your little bits that you have um, are like tiny particles, but they're not like stones and stuff because they have this shooting along at super speeds and stuff, right? So the stones are a metaphor for a concrete, your favorite idea of concrete. To me, I like that idea, but when I piece it together, the problem is that things aren't connected to each other like the way we see. So even more than that we see the wave phenomena, it's the fact that with something like the tractor beam problem, what you need is space to be connected to its neighbors. So if you call that threads, because I was calling it fabric, if you call it whatever you want to call it, basically the point is that you can have that it's a medium because it can be deformed right if you have space whatever kind of space you think it is if space can be deformed by something and space is connected to its neighbor the points in space the so-called points the areas are connected to each other so that if i you know do something here it affects its neighbor the locality that we have and space can deform then it could be a medium for energy just like the water waves are water but there's also extra thing besides the water which is the energy that's going along in that wave right? and that's the metaphor that feels solid to me because i think a water medium is fine and sure sound waves don't go in the vacuum of space but electromagnetic waves do now when we talk about photons being a single particle to me, that's more suspicious because, as you point out, we never see photons. We see specks on a photographic paper. Okay, so a wave could hit that and cause that speck. Just like if a soap bubble was coming out and hit it, then it would pop the soap bubble and leave a mark right there. So, I'm not saying I know exactly how that is, but again, you're allowed to have a theory. Even though you thought it was right years and years ago, you've also evolved it, and so it's evolved, it's changed. Those changes are additions, but still, exactly. Everybody is allowed to have additions, and you said it was just me making my own system right. I want all the rights of a dissident scientist. I'm trying to make my system entirely compatible with modern physics and all I'm adding is the philosophical interpretation. I'm doing natural philosophy using other people's data with my own interpretations but you know obviously inspired and no doubt even subconsciously influenced by all the interpretations you know I received and you know that we all receive as well and for various sources your family originally in school and everybody that you learn your ideas 
uh, about science from. But um, not everyone's a conscious choice. So the, the idea that I'm presenting, I, I think you get um, the basics of it. Uh, because it, for one, you see how it's a pressure idea, right? So if I'm in a very thin, and you can call it a fabric when it's 3D, and foam is difficult because there's quantum foam, that means different things. But it's a rubber, it's a whatever kind, but it's very thin, obviously. And the point is that um, when you, that okay, since it can be deformed in my model, energy can go through it. <clears throat> and the issue is, if there's so much energy that the, it can't deform fast enough, what happens? <coughs> Excuse me. Like when the two water waves cross, and remember the water waves are happening underneath in the water. So that's the better metaphor. We can see the part easiest at the top. So when they come and there's so much water that it breaks the surface tension, that's a, a metaphor for when the amount of energy that holds water together couldn't handle the amount of energy that, that was in the wave. It over power the medium so that has to be a result and of course it's also a physical result something happens when it can't handle it and it you know it gets handled in the schrodinger and dirac equations what you find out is in this field there's certain solutions that are these kinds of kinks when there's a high energy and the deformations can't keep up space gets kinked now i like to think of it as you know it inverts, but that's just a metaphor. The point is, that's that energy, that large amount of energy, is in a little ball, and it stretches the space around it. That catches somehow, stretches the space around it. So there's a pressure, and it's not that unlike your particle pressure, you know, in principle, except for, of course, it has this importantly totally different aspect as well, because things are yin and yang. You know, the, how different can you be particles and waves? But the effects is the same, as you point out, where uh, um, you, you have a pressure phenomena, so just at the most highest level or whatever. Um, you have a pressure phenomena, and since you stretch the space, the pressure is less, so you have a pressure gradient. And furthermore, it goes out as R squared. And furthermore, if you try to aim it, when you aim it, whatever container you have it coming out of would also radiate out in R squared, and there'd just be a shadow because, you know, it was coming out of one side of the thing as opposed to the whole thing um, having done the stretching. So... That problem, uh, or the, the problem of how does the physical matter move around in the space is, it's a kink in the space. It's a little roll up of the space, and so it can roll along, that slide along in all three dimensions. And is space a medium? Because that's all I think needs to be the case. The deformation, of course, you know, being a part of that. So, and it, yeah, it is... A medium that is what I think the idea that it's a totally empty or there's such a thing like that no and ultimately all particles left to themselves will eventually decay back into the energy which is just deformations in the quantum fields we call it which is space with all the kinds of deformations that can happen in it because there's more than just the spatial definite uh, deformations you have electric and magnetic fields propagations and stuff those interact with the spatial deformations, which is why it looks like space is multi-parametered. Multi-dimensions, no, it has three dimensions. They just this, this is a language confusion. I'm sorry, I'm talking to the audience again. Because it's a public statement, you end up wanting to make these public declarations of, of your pet peeves. But, um, but anyway, space is three-dimensional. When they say it has higher dimensions, they're really just saying, because right here there's a number that is the magnetic field 
line, you know, vector, and it's pointing in this direction. So that's a number. Uh, so that location has a number, which is the directions of this, and another two that's the angle of it. So that's three more numbers. That's three dimensions, right? And so with all the fields you can have, uh, you end up with a bunch of numbers. But really, it's just a three-dimensional field with these potential numbers everywhere. And, the, and how we know space is connected is because, in, in my theory, and this is part that overlaps with science, I believe, uh, the way we know it's connected is because if you create a little uh, magnetic field right here, it goes to the place next to it. It's, it's connected. It's hard to isolate. Even with a wall, it'll go on the other side of the wall, usually, unless you have lead and stuff. So, this is just my system, just like you said, and that's fair play. I get to have my system, too. My system doesn't exist as a, as a reply to your system, uh, any more than yours does to my system well less than yours does to my system because uh, the way I put things that's like an origin one of the main origins of you going oh my god this is woo woo and you know you, you created your own system um, and that I encourage and find interesting but I'm probably not going to be an adherent unless it changes an awfully lot for the reasons I've said before. This video isn't a justification, though, for not believing your system. This is what I believe in my own. You could look back before you started talking physics this much, and it's the same. I was just looking. I have a Planck's thing from like nine years ago that has built up a bunch of views, which is actually nice because it's one of the video that I like. I, I took pains to talk really slowly, and I made a PowerPoint or Keynote or whatever. And it's the same view I have now. So, I mean, I have more, I think it's matured or evolved or whatever, but basically um, the fundamentals of it make it that I'm not going to adopt your system. But I believe you have a right to believe in your system. And I don't mind if you get hot and bothered about the facts you find so, like, perturbing that I don't get, you know, how it happens. Um, But I do mind when you act venomous enough that you seem really hurt and agitated. Like, even if I can take it, who cares? I don't want to be a big aggravation, or, or uh, you know, I could give the, I could give that elephant a, you know, a heart attack. Always scaring it. It just obviously doesn't want the humans very close. It's a stompy kind. of um, and that goes to other issues like you were talking about the bots I answered those bots I thought about deleting them I think I might have deleted them before and I just get sick of deleting them um, so I just mark them so everybody sees oh that's a bot and I think it's they could probably see if it's deleted if I answer them they might think they're having success but really it's not working for them and if anything, people that see that that wouldn't figure it out themselves, which who would that be? But there must be somebody or else maybe we'll see if this if it goes away, then we'll know it didn't work that well, this kind of advertising. Uh, it's more for YouTube. So, um, you know, you don't need to go into that, really, do you? And the same thing with the knowing the technology. The way I do it with OBS, I have to wait to see if the audio is coming through. I don't normally record videos and upload them. So these are fair things. These are just different ways of doing things. It's not really a part of the point in my non-monetized channel to worry about anything that isn't part of honestly saying my position, being willing to say how I got there, you know, which could be called justifying it, but I just really feel like no, I'm just, I can remember how I got to a lot of my ideas or figure out, come and go and describe the path. And that I'll listen to your ideas, and I do try to understand those ideas. And, you know, again, I don't think this will be um, reciprocated, this acknowledgement that I do get your idea. Maybe not too well because I have trouble 
seeing it as realistic as you do. But I get it a little bit, like more than a lot of people. And you get my idea more than a lot of people. Even though you don't like to me, that's an entirely separate thing. Because getting an idea is just being able to, um, you know, get the gist of it to a more and more degree. And uh, in the case of skepticism, like Sextus Empiricus, uh, was a skeptic, wrote about skepticism. He also wrote the history we know about the Stoics and the Epicureans. And he did that in a way that a Stoic and an Epicurean would go, yeah, that's what we believe. That's exactly what we told him. Because he was interested in ideas. It's the one thing, even though we're so annoying to many people, us idea collectors and skeptics, in the ancient sense, you know, the reflectioneers. Um, but at least we actually, I'm trying to get a model of other people's ideas. And I then also try to tell other people about these ideas that I've heard of. And so, um, I don't see what the, the problem is with that. But it obviously bothers a lot of people. I feel that that kind of thing will still be the basis of why I probably hate on this video. But again, I, I, for everybody who thinks I have a false expectation, um, I don't have a false expectation. And I don't even have a dare of an expectation, uh, Gary. Um, if you do react that way, that's on me in the sense that if I'm making it seem like, oh, you shouldn't. I mean, pretty much if I interact with you, that's what is to be expected. So that would be the norm and whatnot. So theoretically, I should not have come down to the watering hole when the bull elephant was down there because, you know, now I might have to uh, stun him with the stunner. Um, but I'm not going to stun you with the stunner. What I have is when you were uh, up in the glade in the shade I created an escape hatch by the water hole so I figured well if he comes to stop me I'll be right out of there and uh, no harm no foul I just aggravated him one time that was avoidable so maybe that's on me um, but on the other hand maybe I'm the bull elephant and I'm the one trying to avoid being uh, aggravating the humans Either way, um, that's my reply to you, and you notice it was still about more about my system, because I don't think it really does make a lot of sense for me to talk too much about your system, unless, until you, I don't know, it just isn't a good idea, but maybe it would be if, you know, if you, uh, when you get to the next version, there's something new, you know, because it's evolved. Um, and when you get some new piece together, because you sometimes go, I don't know how this works yet, I'm working on it. Maybe when there's a new part of the theory. Um, but even then, probably not. Um, but it doesn't mean you couldn't critique my theory. So, there is that. Alright, cheers. Hey, those people that hate social isolation could suck it, am I right? <laughs>